This is Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and welcome to our show today. Today we're going to talk about an application of a parametric equation. Application of parametric equation. All right, let's do this. Let's imagine I'm going to make a table here. And I'll make it pretty tall, actually. Pretty tall table. Or let's make it um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to make our table eight units high. I think that should work. Eight units high. We're going to come over three, three units. And then I'm going to stretch this out. So here is zero. Here's three. And then this will this could continue out. We'll see how far we need. So like there's four, here's five, and seven, and nine. So this is going to be x, and this is going to be y. Now, let's make this more interesting. Let's imagine, let's imagine that right here on the very edge, we have... Maybe a marble or a croquet ball. You know, maybe it's a marble. You know, those swirly things that go through it and make something like that. Okay, so we've got this marble. And not only that, but we are going to send that marble off. Maybe we have a mallet. We're going to whap that marble with a mallet. So we're going to send it so that it's moving in the right direction at a rate of, how about one meter per second. So imagine that our environment is frictionless, so we're not, we, uh, the, the marble as it flies off the table is not inhibited by friction of air. So what we know, we know this, we can find the distance, so we can write this. The distance for x is the distance with respect to time is, is its speed, so its speed is one meter per second, and it travels that, so t in this case is second, so t, and it has an initial starting point of three. So that would be the, the equation that tracks the ball's left and right, or in this case just right movement as it gets shot off of the table, um, as it gets shot off of the table. Now, at the same time that the ball is traveling horizontally, this way, it's also being it's also being pulled down by gravity. Now, now we could use like negative nine point eight meters per second squared, but for the simplicity of our example, um, let's say that let's say that it's falling down or right my downward direction, y of t. Notice it. We start with the initial position. We said it's eight, and uh, it's traveling down. Let's just use a simple, a simple acceleration of maybe how about minus one half t squared. So we'll just say that's the acceleration of the ball towards the floor. So let's see what happens. What this means that let's just make a table. Let's make a table here. So if I have my time, and then I have my x value and my y value. So when time is zero, the ball is right there it's as the, the instant before it launches off the table. So my x value is three, and my y value is eight. Now, let's see what happens after one second is passed. Well, after one second is passed, then um, let's, we'll do a little bit of work. So uh, x of one is one times one plus three, so that's four. So x becomes 4, and if we do the same for y, y, become, y of 1 is 8 minus 1 half times 1 squared, so that's 7 and a half. That's 15 over 2, so I'll write, it doesn't matter here, um, 7 and a half. Now, let's, let's try this again. So what about 2 seconds pass? Well, x has moved over one more unit, 5. But this time, if we put in a 2, and let's try that. So y of 2 is going to be 8 minus 1 half times 2 squared, which is 4. 
4 times a half is 2. 8 minus 2, that's 6. So let's track the movement. Let's track this movement. At time is 0, we're at the marble starting point. When time is 1, x is 4, and y is 7 and a half. So the marble hasn't gone very far. In 2 seconds, though, we're at x is 5, but now y is 6. So the marble's gone down. Wow, in that one second, it went down not just a half a unit like it first did, but a unit and a half. Okay, let's try again. What about 3? So when t is 3, I'm at x is 6, and then y is going to be 3 squared. That's 9. Divided by 2, that's 4 and a half. So it's going to be at 3 and a half. So three and a half, that's one, two, three and a half. So now, now my line is right there. Notice that this, in one second, it travels one, two, two and a half units this time. Let's try four. Four, we're at seven, x is seven. And then when um, time is four, we square it to get 16, to multiply it by half for eight. Oh, eight minus, it's at zero. And that's when the marble, the marble hits the floor after four seconds when x is seven. And so notice that we what we actually get here is we get this parabolic curve. We get a parabolic curve. And that's a good way, that's one, a big reason why you'd want to use a parametric equation. Because it's easy to break something into the two different things that you can see and observe. And then you can, um, th yeah, you can write the equations for each one. And if we wanted, we could, we could so solve this and write the equation of the parabola. Um, sure, let's try that. So if I do that, well, I'm going to leave that as an exercise. Oh, what the heck. If we do that, we have, notice that we have x minus 3 is equal to t. So then what you would do is you'd write y equals 8 minus 1 half times x minus 3 squared. And if you look at this, there's, there's the, look at this. This is the, per, the, uh, the vertex form of the, of the parabola, and it tells us it's at 3, 8, which is exactly where our, our parabola started. And you could continue to write this in its standard form. You'd find the y-intercept, and the y-intercept would be, um, once it would be probably be right there at 3 and a half. So there's one more thing I'd like to do with this problem, and that is what I'd like to do is find... the tangent line at t equals 4. Now let's try 5. t equals 5. So what I want is this. I want this tangent line right there. So what we do is we need to take the derivative. So the derivative of our x, so we're going to find our derivative derivative of x with respect to t is going to be 1. And then the derivative of y with respect to t is going to be minus t. And what we need to do is evaluate these at 5, evaluate them at 5. So dx dt stays, and so I'm going to evaluate dy dt at t equals 5. So this becomes minus 5. And then, using what we previously learned, we learned that we can write our equation as x of t equals its starting value. Well, its starting value is this point. This point was... 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, comma, 6. So x started at 5. It has a slope of 1 times t. Plus, or plus, and, let's go back, that should be and, and y of t starts, y starts at 6, but it has, it has a slope of minus 5 times.
times t. And then if we wanted to write this as just one final equation, one final equation, we, uh, we could say that this is x minus 5 equals t. I'm going to plug that in over here. So I have y equals 6 minus 5 times x minus 5. So this is 6 minus 5x plus 25, or 6, I'm sorry, not 6, adding those together, minus 5x plus 31. And what I would encourage you to do is you should double check by taking the derivative, the, taking the derivative of this equation here, And you should find, if you do that, at, at t equals 5, you should come up with a slope of negative 5. And that's how we can also find the tangent line of our parametric equation at any given point. I hope